Welcome back to the news, everyone. So, less than five weeks to go until Dragonflight, and quite a lot of things are going on. We've got fairly major milestones in the testing process, a sweeping enough change to how Mythic Plus and its loot is going to work, which is quite interesting, some nice clarifications for alt leveling, and a whole bunch more. And also, a bit of a personal update at the end has some important things in it, and also an explanation of why I'm in a bizarre box right now. First then, pre-patch things, as you likely know, the 50% XP boost is currently live, and that's something that is going to continue to be live until pre-patch starts, which according to this leak, uh, should be about the 25th of this month. Now, fresh data mining is revealing that the pre-patch is almost certainly going to happen in two waves. The first wave, which will of course come out first, that's not going to include the Evoker Drakthir. No, it's going to be the systems changes like the new UI and the class changes. The second stage then, we believe based on these splash screens, is going to have the Evokers, um, like the Ultiman as well, and also the Elemental Invasions. So we're almost there, really should be two weeks until we actually see the very start of this. And with that said, let's talk about a little bit more of testing. So to get in sync there, the testing is rolling on, Mythic Plus testing is beginning with purchasable class tier sets hitting the alpha, which is great because it basically means proper endgame testing on characters with tier. Now, raid testing is also ongoing, and they're actually planning a whole bunch of normal mode testing where the whole raid is just going to be open, so that's pretty cool. Now, we've got a few minor UI things then. There's a Dragonflight uh, Great Vault sort of little visual overhaul. Uh, we've also got that the Vigor will change from grey to blue whenever it's full, which is a better visual indicator. The Dragon Riding Talent UI also looks a bit more Dragonflight-ish. And we've also got resizing options for player, target, and party frames, which is pretty good. So, while those Overwatch 2 servers are squealing, basically the WoW progress is going on fairly nicely. Next, though, we do have a big raft of changes. And normally, this is where I would promo the Patreon stuff, like our latest loot. Here it is, by the way. Uh, but for now, I'll just say, uh, just stick around till the end of the video because I do have a bunch of updates for you. And with that said, let's get into this Mythic Plus situation. All right, so I know not everybody cares about Mythic Plus. I'd say... Give this one a shot, if not, you can always skip forward in the video. But okay, Mythic Plus is changing quite a bit in this expansion per Blizzard's rather chunky post. Seasonal affixes are being rethought, and they're actually moving to something that is a bit more simple. I'm actually going a bit away from the Kiss Curse design that honestly a lot of players have liked recently. Now, Blizzard basically say that with Dragonflight's, uh, you know, every season having a completely new dungeon pool, well, that means that they're not really going to need the seasonal affix as much. And of course, they did highlight the other benefits there. It does mean that it's easier to go into a new season because it's a new dungeon pool for everybody else. Instead of halfway through the expansion, you want to pick up Mythic Plus and, oh, every other player has six to eight months of meta knowledge built in that you just don't have right? So that stuff all helps them not really feel like they need a seasonal affix as much. And also, I thought this was kind of interesting, like, they, they do like the seasonal affixes, they do like the experimentation, but they feel that the seasonal affixes don't actually stand to the game in the long run, because ultimately, well, they're in, and then they're gone. Whereas a lot of the other affixes they've developed have generally stuck around for uh, longer than a single season. So I suppose a overall theme of Dragonflight is Blizzard thinking about how they can maybe make life easier for themselves in the future by designing more sustainable foundations. Okay, so... This all does make sense to me, even though seasonal affixes are something that I've liked, especially the most recent one. But yeah, they're less needed if a new season means a totally uh, new dungeon pool. Now, Blizzard also said that the borrowed power from, I suppose, the KISS part of the KISS curse design of the seasonal affixes also could just get a little bit out of hand. Now, they have basically re-scoped what a seasonal affix is, and they've got a new one here called Thundering. Um... They said it's going to change, like change mechanically and stuff, but if you take a look at this video on Alpha, I mean, it is essentially just spread, dodge the balls, and don't run into the balls from your friends. And it just happens every 75 seconds. Yawn? 
that's kind of boring. Um, yeah, I don't know. If it's going to be like this, I'd almost just say... Are we doing this just for the sake of having a new affix appear at plus 10 or something? Because that's what we've been used to. I mean, I can see this particular mechanic being a neat piece of movement within the context of a fight, but for it to be an every 75 seconds thing for a six month long season, honestly, I think that will get rather old and it'll just be a bit annoying. Now, in fairness, their post is not concrete. It is full of asks for feedback, so Blizzard, uh, you know, they, <laughs> they're not really saying this is completely set in stone. And even on the idea of having a kiss curse thing, like they're happy to make you more powerful, but they did say it would probably come in the form of mobs being a bit more powerful. Now, as for my take in this, look, I enjoy it when a seasonal affix changes up a dungeon via something like mob placements, which is actually why I really quite liked the shrouded affix that we just have. But to have some annoying thunderballs to deal with every 75 seconds, well, that just seems rather annoying. It doesn't seem really that thematically strong. One thing that one of the things I liked about shrouded is it had a narrative framing that made sense. So so, to be honest, when we're reducing it to what Thundering appears to be, ah, to me it really just kind of loses its identity and I almost would rather not bother with the exercise. Yeah. Now also they've said that the um, affix rotation is now going to be 10 weeks, and uh, yes, they did confirm, of course, the death of Necrotic and Inspiring. Next then, we've got to talk about rewards and gearing, because, wow, this is a, well, that's a bit of a change. So, they've talked about some of the M-plus gearing problems, right? They want it to have more progression as you push, because obviously it stops a plus 15 right now. So, yeah, you're going to keep on getting better rewards up until Mythic plus 20, and starting at Mythic plus 11, enemy health and damage will scale up by 10% per keystone level, up from 8. So that's a small difference between any two keystone levels, but across maybe 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, it is actually quite a large increase uh, in difficulty because, uh, especially just of how those percentages work, where, yeah, it's a slightly higher percentage, but you know, it's a, it's a percentage of an ever increasingly getting larger thing and so on and so forth. So I've done some numbers here for you. A plus 10 gets you eye level 392 at the end of a run, which is a tad below the mid tier of normal mode raid loot and 398 in the vault, which is the same as the final two bosses on normal mode. Now that's kind of interesting. In Season 4, a plus 10 drops to 81 from the end of a dungeon, which is about mid-normal mode, and to 91 from the vault, which is actually the start of heroic gear. Now, plus 15 in Season 4 drops I level 288 from the end of a dungeon, and then 304 from the vault. Now, that's interesting because 288, that is slightly below heroic gear, while 304 is actually the base mythic item level. In Dragonflight, a plus 15 is uh, dropping the equivalent item level of the final two normal bosses, and then the vault drops eye level 411, which is heroic final two boss item level, rather than the start of mythic, which it currently is right now. So they're actually being notched down a little bit, um, but of course they will you know, be going up a bit higher because the point is these rewards increase all the way up to Mythic plus 20, which is going to drop just shy of heroic mid-tier boss loot, but uh, it will actually get you Mythic mid-boss item level loot. Another interesting thing, actually, is that they're adding in a 13th upgrade level, and that will take you to 415, which uh, is not as good as a maxed output of vault gear, but uh, it is actually closer. Yeah, uh, so essentially the best vault item that you could get, um, that you can get in Dragonflight, is three item levels less than the best gear at the end of Mythic. In Shadowlands, that number is actually seven less. And then it's like, end Mythic versus a Mythic plus 20. What's harder? So I think we're having this situation where Mythic plus is still really quite rewarding in the new expansion, you're certainly going to have to work pretty hard for it, though, because of, uh, well, it's from a plus 20, and that's actually pretty damn hard content. But I suppose while you're also getting uh, the, the best gear from a plus 20, you'll be unlocking your dungeon portals and things like that, assuming they are keeping that reward going. 
And I guess also for Blizzard, they probably have realized the issue with Raiders, right? Where for a lot of us people who could just, you know, easily do normal in like the first week and then start slowly just having some fun progressing through Heroic, a lot of us could just split off into groups of five and get way better gear from uh, the Great Vault through Mythic Plus. So perhaps with this, Blizzard are trying to make it so that to really get the good Mythic Plus gear, you are having to do harder and harder and harder content, uh, perhaps to the point where it will feel like Mythic Plus is competing less with Heroic raiding. At least if that's their intent, it would make sense to me because that's something quite a few of us have felt. So basically Blizzard are making it so that to really get the best stuff from Mythic Plus, you're actually having to go in there and do some pretty damn challenging stuff because with that health and damage increase combined with the gear going up to Mythic Plus 20, I mean, that does actually sound pretty damn hard. Perhaps the point there is that that will be hard enough that as a heroic raider, I won't feel like Mythic uh, Plus is kind of like unduly strong arming in to uh, maybe the part of the game that I'm more used to because I know one of the issues Blizzard know that people have is it's like, yeah, you could go do your raid stuff, but just split up into two teams of five, do M plus, you'll get better quality loot, which a lot of us have felt. And to cap it off, here is the Keystone Master mount for the first season of Dragonflight. Interestingly enough, it is a ground mount, and I could normally understand a degree of salt there. I think Blizzard feel okay making it be a ground mount, though, because ultimately people will be, they'll, they'll be using their dragon riding, right? So, yeah, that's, that's basically that. Next, then, let's talk about tier sets. Okay, tier sets will be returning in this expansion. Of course, it's nice to actually just have these as a core game feature again, like they always used to be. And these tier sets are light touch. Now, I did see some people be a bit frustrated, confused about why these tier sets are perhaps such a step back from the season uh, three ones of Shadowlands, but uh, well, that's actually decently normal for the first tier of an expansion. It's just it's been so long since we've actually had tier sets be a thing. Now, these sets will mostly be focused on a bit of your resource generation, maybe a bit of cooldown manipulation, a bit of damage, but basically Blizzard's focus, they've said, is a minimal impact on your talent choices. Because yes, Season 3 of Shadowlands style ones that really change things up, those are quite fun and exciting. Yes, they will feel super fresh, there's a lot of value for that midway through an expansion. However, doing something like that at the start of this expansion, when we've already had the talent stuff, which has came with quite a few class changes actually, well, not only will that be a whole bunch of stuff at once, but also, it would be a bit weird if Blizzard just gave us all these new talents and then gave us tier sets that are highly restrictive, because they really make you go in one way in your talent tree. Now that said, they didn't say no impact on talent choice, they said minimal, so they'll do their best. So for Disc Priest that I might main in this expansion, it does mean that, uh, you know, using shield, that will buff uh, your next spell by 10% with the four set. It means penance, either 100% of its damage or 30% of its healing, will um, buff up your shield, your next shield. So, you know. Simple enough, but feels good. Uh, for Frost DK, another example there is increased crit damage and a chance to not consume your uh, killing machine uh, charges. So that kind of thing, definitely noticeable. Some more noticeable than others, uh, but still it'll be some power to get. It'll be decently fun to earn, but it will not be unduly impactful. Now that said, I think there is something that is perhaps a tad more dramatic the catalyst so there is some good news here blizzard said that they like the catalyst for providing an rng backstop and of course also even acknowledging that yeah people use it to collect cosmetic sets so that's really good now they said the new and returning players they should not have a monumental uh, you know list of catch-up tasks uh, specifically about tier and they say that they can confidently carry the catalyst forward as an evergreen feature now that's nice. What's maybe less nice to some is the unlock timing because it's the same. It is six weeks after Mythic opens. Now that said, there is a bit of a difference between uh, Mythic now and Mythic then. Uh, when this happened in uh, Sepulchre of the First Ones, well, Mythic opened a week after 
normal and heroic, whereas Mythic is actually opening the same day as normal and heroic for this expansion. So I suppose for us people who don't do Mythic, uh, it will feel like it's coming out a, a, a week earlier. I guess where people were angry at eight weeks, it'll be seven this time around. I suppose that'll be that. It is a bit weird, though, because Blizzard themselves said that they felt the creation catalyst actually unlocked too slowly in life. Now, with this not being that much faster, well, what's happened? Have they changed their mind? Or is it perhaps a case where the context is different and they'd feel that perhaps with the way that Mythic Plus, Raid, and Professions, which are now significantly more important, uh, with what they do to gear, they just feel like this is actually an okay pacing? Kind of hard to say but I am left wondering for the PvP players and the Mythic Plus players, well, that is going to be six weeks of the season where you are indeed relying 100% on the Great Vault for tier, which, uh, I don't know. Maybe that didn't feel so good last time. Let me know what you think. Let's talk a bit about alt-leveling then. So, Dragon Isles Adventuring is the name of basically this expansion's version of Threads of Fate. That uh, just means that once you've done it once in your main character, where it is a linear sort of campaign deal, uh, you can level in any order, right? Do whatever zone you want in any order. That's, that's just fine. Of course, world quests will be available as well. And, uh, they, you know, there will be world quests that drop gear, the actually will scale to your level, but perhaps you'll want to, because the world quests don't seem that aggressive, maybe you'll want to save the gear dropping ones until you actually hit max level. But a nice perk of this too is dragon riding, because your dragon riding is actually account wide in terms of the glyphs that you've unlocked. So the glyphs basically are just big things in the world, you fly into them and you unlock them, right? And they give you the dragon riding talent points. So because of the way this works, it does mean that on your new character, you can literally dragon ride off the boat and you'll just be able to, you know, have your talents. You'll be super powerful. So two weeks, and, and of course, because you can basically 100% unlock everything in dragon riding, at least in terms of player power, in like the space of a few hours, flying around, picking up the glyphs, it does mean that your alts will, they'll have an utterly turbocharged experience. So that's pretty sweet. Now, it doesn't seem like it's the fastest leveling experience in the world, um, but it's, you know, br broadly on par with what you would um, expect. I suppose one thing I will say is that the side quests are actually quite good in this expansion. You should check out Matt's video that he did over on our Variety channel. It was kind of like for an FF player comparing the Dragonflight stuff. And uh, within that, there's really a lot more positivity than you'd expect from him, which was uh, actually quite nice to see. But seriously, the side quests have got quite a lot of heart, so uh, there's definitely enough meat in this for, uh, you know, sending two characters through. That's definitely for sure. Personally, I would like it if maybe, uh, you know, chain running dungeons, chain running some PvP, that kind of thing was like a, a little bit more uh, positive. And I guess the more that you could, say, progress through the different uh, renowned reputations and stuff as you level a new character up, the better. Okay, let's quickly round off things from the other two Warcrafts, which are, of course, you know, modern and classic. So the XP buff is live and modern. You can get your 50% there. And Blizzard have hot fixed in PvP gear chests that I think you need 1,400 uh, rating for, which, uh, I mean, cool, but it's a bit late for that. Over in Wrath of the Lich King, then, they've uh, just applied a nifty little 30% honor discount for honor gear. And other than that, Nax, I of Eternity, and Sarth are releasing, which uh, is all very awesome. I wish I was joining you, but cue the personal update bit that I, uh, I tease at the end. So, the reason why there was no videos on the channel last week is... You know, I went to Distant Worlds, the, uh, you know, the Final Fantasy um, Orchestra in London over the weekend. And, uh, of course, London is uh, is full of people. So I did did get the old virus, which, uh, of course, means that I've uh, had to do all the, the quarantine stuff because, uh, you know, I don't want to get all our colleagues sick, which would be pretty bad. Anyway, uh, yes, I was honestly... I'd say it was pretty shit for 36 hours. Uh, I would call that literally the worst headache I have ever had. Um, it was a humongous, like, wow headache that was actually behind both of my eyes. So that was pretty pog. Um, and then for me, it just, like, went into a lot of the body aches. I had the weirdest sense that, like, both my kidneys were screaming. That's just, like, where it felt. I don't know what's up. But anyway, um... 
after that, I was just really tired for a while. And it's funny because like right now I feel right as rain. I feel fantastic. I'm actually still testing positive though, which I guess does mean that if I breathe in my colleagues, they'll get it and that would be bad. So I will of course be, yeah, I don't know. Uh, look, it should be one or two days before I can go back in the office and actually get to work. Which is what I want to do because, man, I have there, there are so many videos to record. The team have done an awesome job when uh, when I wasn't around, so that was really sweet. Okay, other things then. Big lore series coming up. Um, kind of going through, like, sort of main characters for us. It's also a bit of a prototype of... Do you know what I'm going to call it? I'm just going to flat out call it content that we lose money on, but it's really fucking cool. And hopefully between Patreon and sponsors, uh, we're able to make the money back because it's all content that via YouTube ads will, uh, those videos will cost, mm, I don't know, maybe 30% more than they'll earn in YouTube ads, maybe 40%. So this is where sponsors and Patreon are really important. But uh, I, I want those things to be important, frankly, because the less I'm dependent on YouTube ads, really the the, the better, right? Um, I mean, the obvious dream would be 100% fan funding to the point where we could really go aggro and kind of like beef up and staff for things. But uh, look, right now I'm actively thinking about um, staffing uh, decisions, we could say, because I want to bulk the team up. I want to start doing some more cool shit in the lore front, potentially in the gameplay front and there's actually some really awesome like uh, sort of wow and blizzard uh, docs that we got planned too so that's what's going on with the content front over in the game front uh, let's just say I've, I've been editing things relating uh, to the game um, we've actually had uh, incredible success uh, we went from so it's really interesting I know obviously how many wish lists we have but uh, it's not a public thing but the ranking of upcoming games by wish lists is tracked by Steam DB. And uh, I think we've went from being like 320 in the world out of the like 1600 games that it's tracking. I mean, game number, well, say like game number two is like the new Hogwarts game, which I mean, yeah, no shit. That's the second most wish listed game in Steam. But uh, we're, we're actually doing pretty well because we went from 320 up to uh, 250. And uh, I mean, in the last while uh, with Steam Next Fest, we had a demo out. Um, Thomas has been fixing many bugs. <laughs> He's been a very busy guy. Um, but I'm extremely happy with where things have been going. I've been um, editing some content related to the game um, in a little bit of my uh, my downtime here. Um, we picked up, I believe, over 10,000 wish lists, which, uh, I mean, <laughs> yeah, wow, holy shit. Uh, we had a really good response, a uh, really, really good response um, so far to the actual demo. It's crazy, like, we've, um, for, for the demos, like, there's always been technical feedback, you know, some issues that, that crop up, uh, things that are actually sometimes fixed in the development branch, but in the, you know, the version that gets packaged off for the demo aren't fixed. In other cases, lots of really good new bugs. Um, and just little things like that, and, you know, some things like a bit of copy editing that haven't been done yet. But what I'm very happy about is, um, so far, everything is, like, positive. And it's not just, like, you know, oh, 7 out of 10. Uh, it seems that for, uh, for the people who are actually making this game for, they really fucking seem to like it. And I guess one of the good things is, because our demo has two hours and... I think it's usually two hours, 20 minutes it takes people to do our demo. Um, like, it's a very fucking generous demo. Uh, certainly you know, you'll feel the pinch of mechanics a lot more after the demo because, I mean, obviously things go a little bit tits up, so we do want to let you in gently and give you a false sense of security. But uh, yeah, so far anyway, the, um, the stuff has been really, really positive. So as for what I'm doing then, well, um, a little bit hiring up for our team here, right? I want to get stuff better, um, you know, for, for the YouTube content. Uh, I've already talked a little bit about that. I'm also thinking about really, you know, because like once a game comes out, that's like our big goal. It's been our big goal for a long time. It's like that goal has been achieved. And we do actually very much know what we will be uh, doing next. But that's obviously a very natural point to be like, okay, let's sit back. Let's actually see what sales we get. Um, because... Yeah, I thought that bit's kind of relevant, isn't it? But it is one of those times to to reevaluate, to ensure that we're steering our ship in the right direction, and uh, to be honest with you, to to try to shoot for the moon and hit the stars, but in a more control. No, shoot for the stars and hit the moon. That's it. 
<laughs> um, but do so in a bit more of a controlled manner so that, uh, you know, there's not an uh, inordinate amount of blood, sweat, and tears in the way. So currently, that's what me and Thomas have been doing. We've been trying to chart forward, you know, the YouTube side, the game side. How are these things working together and in unison? What are the projects we're doing next? How do we get funding lined up for that? How do we, you know, manage compensation, manage all the stuff? What are the roles we want to hire? Um, and as you can imagine, that's a, that takes a lot of time. That takes a lot of time. I guess what I would say is, uh, if you're in Northern Ireland and you think you have a set of skills that, uh, I mean, honestly, in the game side, it would mostly be, it would probably mostly be the programming side for games, but I mean, obviously in YouTube, like you, you straight up know what we do. Um, if you've got any experience and you're in Northern Ireland, as like a sort of COO um, or, you know, handling sales, business development, that's one thing. And then, of course, the other side would obviously be, you know, uh, look, if you're a video editor, um, if you're a Warcraft person who makes content or wants to make content or whatever, um, I'm only mentioning this casually now because, you know, <laughs> YOLO, um, I I'll do a more, uh, you know, proper thing at some point, but I don't know. Hit me up on Twitter or, uh, I guess, fire over a an email or something. <laughs> anyway, anyway. That's basically it for today's video. Um, if you want to support the things that we're doing, of course, the Patreon is down below. We've got a nice, fresh month of loot that, of course, is the special, which, uh, I mean, I think the art has been really gorgeous for. Um, so, as always, props to our team for all of that. And, uh, yeah, uh, when I'm next back, I'll hopefully not be in a soundproofed void, and I'll probably have better audio quality and better camera quality. Hmm. I should probably turn this, like, bunker into some sort of b bizarre, you know, green screen perfect setup. Maybe I'll do that, but uh, anyway, that's been it for the WoW News. Let me know what you think. See you next time.